Hi, and welcome to Friends and Neighbors. I'm Sherry Tatum. Have you ever wanted to be in a gospel music video? Well, stay tuned for some pointers in today's show, because we have Daryl Lasseter with us. He's a producer and a director, so stay tuned. Ooh, I've got to practice, girl. Woo-hoo! Yeah! Hi, and welcome to this edition of Friends and Neighbors. I'm Donna Ritchie, along with my co-host Sherry and Kim. And as Sherry forestated, we have a, a, a guest here today who is a personal friend of mine. And uh, we kind of, we go a little ways back, but I want to introduce to you, our viewing audience, Mr. Daryl Lassiter. Welcome to the show. Thank you Good to much. have you. Thank Good you to have me. you. Thank you. Well, you're a producer, a yes. director. Uh, you've done all kinds of things in that field. Um, I was reading over um, your bio and everything and uh, you've done radio newscasts, specials and commercials, music videos, documentaries, short films, albums. What haven't you done in this field? <laughs> well, <laughs> Plus you're producing a movie. <laughs> yes I am. Yeah I tell you it's, um, it, it's amazing but I've done a lot of quick things mm -hmm. you know radio and then mm -hmm. TV and then newspaper and magazines and it just goes on and on but it, it, it's it, it's, it's sort of a, a misconception because mm -hmm. I've been doing this for about 15 years, mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of things I did at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, I did a radio morning show, and then I'd go and write newspaper articles, and then I'd go write magazine stories mm -hmm. all in the same day. Yep. And then sometimes I would freelance at a television station and direct the newscast. So really that's four different things, but I would do them all in one day. Wow, yeah. that's that's a pretty busy mm -hmm. day then. It is, and it's still like that. Yeah, yeah. really. He plays a horn in between. Oh yes. Well, yeah. this, <laughs> well see, when I met you, yeah. you were playing. You yeah. were in the band right. at uh, at a college, mm -hmm. which one of the which is the college that you have kind of in your movie. Right. Yes. That you have, and tell us about the movie. Pay the price. You're the director and producer. And and writer. Okay. Right. Yes, and partly editing, and I was also a camera operator, acting in the movie too. Mm -hmm. It deals with a, a true story of um, college life in the early 80s back to the late 60s where hazing was a big thing in in marching bands because bands used to get so many people trying out six and seven hundred and you can only have about 150 on the field there was ways they had to weed out the weak and they did that through initiation sometimes it got to be very physical sometimes it got to be very mentally abusive mm -hmm. verbally abusive emotionally abusive and that's what it deals with plus it deals with because it was an all-male band at the time they didn't want girls and they didn't want anyone white in the band mm -hmm. so this movie deals with the first white person to try and join the band and then the first female at the same time mm -hmm. at the same time we cover stories that uh, de dealt with college students with um, drugs and alcoholism racism sexism and all those other things that happen in college so it's a true story okay well i understand too uh because uh, i've done my research of course mm -hmm. and uh you you're working with a lot of wonderful people that are uh in the business and right. which is so important nowadays mm -hmm. because i mean you hear the rise of christian film mm -hmm. and a lot of christian based films and it's been a struggle for them to get it out to the mainstream public right. and you're doing that same thing I think I read uh, that you were featured, the Pay the Price was featured in the Golden Globe? The, it's the Hollywood? the Hollywood Reporter magazine, oh, okay. which is like the Bible of, of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. right. it's, um, and it was the Golden Globe issue, because mm -hmm. the Golden Globe Awards were a few weeks ago. And right. It was in that issue. Okay. And it talked about uh, my production, the cast members, the crew, mm -hmm. how they can contact me for an interview. Oh, it's awesome. very prestigious. Right. Yes, yeah. it yeah. is. Well, I mean, how long did it take you to, to come about with the film, the writing? Because I know it takes a, uh, it's a process. But... Years, yes. I started, I seriously started on this project August 1st, 1991. Mm. That was the day I said, I'm going to do it. 
and I start writing on it. Mm -hmm. It took about a year and a half to write the story. It took another year to learn how to do a proposal mm -hmm. because uh, I heard that you know I was going to have to get investors to invest in it since it was an independent project. Mm -hmm. Well, I spent years and years learning how to do a proposal, and I finally received the funds back in um, July of last year, 1999. Mm -hmm. We started production August 1st, which was exactly eight years to the day that I started. So eight, uh, August 1st of 1999, we started shooting in September. We were finished in November. Um, I just wrapped up post-production a few days ago. Okay. And now we're invited for the New York International Film Festival, May 1st through the 8th. Wonderful. And the opening night is at Madison Square Garden. Wow, that's yes. you be interesting. Yes. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me this too. Tell me some of the people that you're working with that are in, involved in this film. I understand J. Anthony Brown. Right. J. Anthony Brown is a nationally known comedian. Yes. He's been on the BET Comic View. Mm -hmm. He's been on the Martin TV show, Living Single, mm -hmm. uh, Moesha. Uh, he's right now on the ABC radio network, uh, mm -hmm. the Tom Joyner Morning Show, mm -hmm. and uh, he's like one of the stars in the movie. I have other actors who've been on um, um, Selma, Lord Selma movie, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. TV movies. Um, there's Crystal Porter. Um, pretty much, I think that's about it that, that you will know. Okay. Uh, the other what actors. What about Dave? David Goff. David, yeah. David Goff is my executive producer. Okay. And, and as well as a co-producer. Mm -hmm. David uh, has his own record company. He's a, he's a recording artist also. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and David has a cameo role in the movie. He plays the minister. Really? And he is the one who is actually okay. stressing the importance of being patient and mm -hmm. the determination and things you're going to have to go through to be successful in life, which is what pay the price is all about. Mm -hmm. You know, to be a doctor, there's a price to pay. These mm -hmm. guys go through years of medical school. Mm -hmm. Uh, attorneys have to pass law exams and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. To be successful in life, you have to pay the price. In other words, you have to pay your dues. You have to pay oh, your dues. Yeah. And that's the whole premise of the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, I know you've paid an awesome price. And Still I understand you're in, the, you're in the movie as yes, well. Yes, yeah, okay. I had to, I, I'm actually playing myself, and uh -huh. there are four other characters that are playing me, too. One guy is playing me as a freshman, mm -hmm. one as a sophomore, one as a junior, right. one as a senior. Mm -hmm. And uh, I make a cameo as a guy who com is coming back as an old school graduate. Are you singing and playing your trumpet in there? I, I do both. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I sing, play. And, um, Just multi-talented. Well, <laughs> you got to thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> did you, you do know? your casting in Atlanta? I did. I did some in uh, Los Angeles and, and some in New York, but mostly in Atlanta. Because we have a wonderful talent pool here in Atlanta. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. we do. Yeah. And then my cast was great. We rehearsed for a week and a half, and when we got on the set, they, were, they made very few mistakes mm -hmm. because we were, we were uh, well rehearsed mm -hmm. and I mean they learned the entire script. It wasn't just learning their scenes, their scenes. for the day. Mm -hmm. They learned it like a stage play because a lot of my actors had been in plays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they just went from page one to 120 and learned the whole movie. And actually they knew it better than I did mm -hmm. because I would call for a scene and they would say, no, that's not what was in that scene. This is what's in that scene. I'd say, oh, wow, okay, you're telling me. <laughs> well, I applaud you for doing that for the rehearsal and for them learning because the ones, the movies that I have been in, you mm -hmm. don't get a rehearsal. You right. show up that day, however many days you're there, and you do it right mm -hmm. there cold. Right. You just right. go from it. Only one did I do with uh, Richard Widmark and Faye Dunaway that they sit around on a table for the day mm -hmm. and we did a rehearsal, mm -hmm. which makes it so much better for the actor. You're not scared right. to death when you get up there. Right. And the only reason I knew to do that was because I read a book by Spike Lee. Mm -hmm. And he said he'd spent two weeks rehearsing his actors in his first couple of movies. And I said, well, I better do that too. <laughs> That's and my actors, were, yeah, my actors were so gracious. They they actually were at rehearsal for two weeks for free. Mm. Oh, that's I just good. didn't have the budget to pay them, so right. you know mm -hmm. I, I was very honored and yeah. very pleased, and yeah. I appreciate. Actors them are usually much. easy to work with, yeah. I think, and like, they want to be better than the crew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they want to be the best. Plus, yeah. in order to be mm -hmm. an actor, you have to kind of be adaptable flexible. as well, right? And flexible. Mm -hmm. Well, well, we're gonna on the next. Uh, segment here that we're going to break for a commercial. We want to talk about some of the things that you've been involved with. I know we're going to see, you're going to see some clips of videos and work that Daryl has done. and He's done a phenomenal job and I say he's the next Steven Spielberg of the movies and so um, we want you to stay tuned to more Friends and Neighbors. Come right back and be with us. <laughs> 